So in this video, I want to go over some basic things for improving your model. So I've taken one of uh, the models I was looking at, and um, it, for the most part it looks really good, but there's a few things that could be improved very easily. So I want to show you how to identify what can improve and how to do that. Um, so the first thing here is this part has some thickness and apparently the reason why it was built this way was because this was built with some thickness as well. So I'm guessing this person used an offset and it's an offset as a solid which gives it thickness. So that doesn't really matter. What we're really going to look at is this thing here but um, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because I have to explode it and I'm going to do some stuff. Yeah, um, so I'm going to use this surface here and I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to delete everything else and this is going to really speed up the process. Yeah, that should really speed up the process if I do it this way. So the principle here it's basically the same as you know as you would expect for like the dock assignment and how we built the neck um, we are creating some type of section here where we're cutting away from this surface and then creating another surface in between which we would call a transitional surface and so what I've done is I hid the surface I want to work with and then you can go in and identify where you would cut that surface and obviously you don't want it to be split up with one, two and maybe three curves. You want it to be one cut here, one cut there, a single transitional surface as opposed to here where you have one surface, two surface and you have like four surfaces. Anyway, um, what I should do is create a backup layer, so I'll call it backup, select whatever you want to put inside that layer which would be pretty much everything here except this one surface we're going to be working with. So select everything and assign all of that inside a backup layer and this way you can toggle hide and show all of these surfaces if you need them later. Um, one thing I want to look at right now is the smoothness of these surfaces. It seems okay. So here it's fine for the most part. It looks really, really good. Um, let's see. We make them smaller and adjust the mesh. More polygons. Yep. So we can see it better. And yeah, it looks really good. Okay, now we're going to untrim, so I'll just type it in, um, untrim all of these, and now if I do a mirror, and again I'm just going to type in all of my commands, because it's quicker and easier for me to do. So if I mirror this and I look at the handle, I see that it's not tangent, it's not smooth in between the two sides, which is okay, it's just it's something I have to do first, uh, so I'm going to have to match them together so that they are uh, at least tangent to each other. Uh, in fact, if, if one side is tangent to the other, then they would be curvature because it's symmetrical. Um, so I'm not going to go into it, but basically if you just align both surfaces to each other, you'll get perfect smooth um, a smooth continuity between the two surfaces. Um, so the way you do it is you go in uh, and you type in a match surface and then you can click on one surface and the other surface on the other side and you get a bunch of different options. Now most of the time what you're going to do is set up tangency for one of the surfaces and position for the other side. In this case because 
we're working with two surfaces and they are symmetrical to each other, we can say tangency with tangency on the other side. And you can see basically nothing has changed. And that's because what we want here is an average between the continuity of one side and the continuity of the other side. So we have to click on the average surface function and then we're going to get tangency on both sides and average of both surfaces. And says we broke the history. The reason why it broke the history is because I clicked right here. So you don't have to do that. Um, that's a feature I was using before. That's fine. Um, so now we're going to have to do that on the back side as well. So I'll just press enter to repeat the match surface command. Click on one side, click on the other one, nothing happens. Okay. Um, why is nothing happening? Yeah, nothing is happening because when I did the match, let's go back, Control Z. Okay, so this was one surface, and when I did match surface, for some reason it created two surfaces. Um, okay, let's see, why is it creating two surfaces? Automatic, yeah, maybe that's why. Uh, match edge to the closest points, define. I don't know, we can try some of these features and see if it changes anything. Um, my guess is that the number of CVs is something like 2 degrees, and one way we could check is by using the rebuild command. Um, we used it only once in previous assignments, and again it was the rubber dock. So the rubber dock is considered a freeform method, and when you use freeform, here you go, yeah. Um, so when you use any kind of freeform methods, you want to make sure that your degrees are anything other than one or two. One or two is horrible for freeform modeling, because it just doesn't have enough points. Uh, it's just the mathematics is very different for degree two for surfaces. So all you have to do in this case is make it degree three or more. Uh, degree 3 is ideal, so we'll do 3, 3, uh, we'll keep these numbers the same, 50, and 5. I'm not sure why it says 50, because it seems like it's a lot less. Um, so actually I'm going to check um, if you reduce the number of U spans, if you get similar results, and it looks like you do, so um, I'm just going to use 30, 5, 3 degrees, and 3 degrees. Uh, the most important thing is the degrees, but, you know, if you can minimize the number of, of spans, of curve on your face that you have here, um, it's going to make the model better. Just lighter, basically. Okay, so normally you would go in and you would mirror one of the sides to the other side, um, so I'll use this endpoint. I'm holding shift, and if I look at it, there's most likely not going to be a tangent um, continuity between the two surfaces. So again, we're going to use match, match surface. We're matching one side to the other side, accept using tangency, tangency, match average, automatic, and now it worked. It did not break this surface into two surfaces. So again, the reason why that was happening is because the original surface had two degrees and three degrees instead of having three degrees and three degrees. So now we can move forwards and do a match surface on the other side. And again, using tangency, tangency, with average surface, so that both surfaces adjust, adjust to each other. So now, if we look at the Analyze tool, and we're going to use the Zebra, so if we look at this Zebra pattern, hmm, looks really rough, so I'm going to go back again and adjust the mesh, increase it to a maximum, and maybe change it to the finest. And we can see it's much smoother than it was before. Um, yeah, so we're getting good results. 
So that would be the first step. You want to make sure everything is smooth and um, you want to make sure that the transition is nice. 